right, I'm out with uh, monochrome again today. I'm going to try to get out with it every day. After all, I paid for every day. So uh, right now I'm on uh, Denver, actually University of Denver can, uh, campus, otherwise known as DU. I like to shoot here. They've got some pretty interesting architecture. And usually there's a lot of people around, but of course it's uh, Christmas, sort of pre-Christmas weekend here. So it's dead. That's fine. So I'm going to do some architect the architectural photography. I'm shooting the uh, Zeiss 50mm Sonar today. That's going to be a huge leap up from the uh, Voigtlander I shot all day yesterday. If you look at yesterday's video, every one of those shots with the Voigtland was with the Voigtlander. And I would say that the monochrome has really proven to me just how weak that lens is at uh, larger apertures. So uh, if you, I recommend the lens. It's a reasonably priced M mount lens, uh, but it doesn't do that well wide open. So if you get one, you're gonna wanna shoot it uh, stop down to probably 2.8 or smaller, unless you really have to have the light gathering capabilities, in which case it's not that big a deal. You need the light gathering capability so you put up with the uh, sort of softness and the spherical aberration that I noticed in the photos you can't see them in the video uh, I think all photos look crappy in video I'm just going to do a bit of walking around here and uh, we'll see what I come up with by the way um, there's really no well there's some haze I guess in the sky but it's fairly contrasty conditions so um, it's kind of a torture test for a digital camera in my experience film, um, you can do things to compensate you know, for contrasting conditions and with digital it's much harder. And that's true of what I've read with the monochrome. It tends to blow out the whites. So I'm going to do some experiments. I may end up setting my exposure compensation down a notch or two. Uh, we'll see. Shooting architecture um, with the M is actually a bit of a torture test for the M if you're shooting bricks. That's because, um, like I am digitals, don't have anti-alias filters. And aliasing will kick your butt if you're shooting something that has a repeating rectilinear pattern, like brick. So um, that's another good reason to shoot with this camera on this campus, because there's a whole lot of brick here um, behind me. I just took a shot of that building. You can see behind me. That's kind of a torture test in two ways. The building is in uh, full sun and has a shadow on it. And then there's a full shadow tree, a big pine tree there. I don't know if you can see it. Um, so I'm really interested to see kind of what, what kind of dynamic range I can get out of this camera. That's one of the reasons I took that particular shot. From what I can see, the monochrome really handles skies very nicely. I haven't put on any filters, and I'm going to do that eventually. Being a monochrome camera, you can shoot this camera uh, like any film camera, or when you're shooting black and white film, you put a filter on to change the um, sort of the way light or color, color of light is uh, captured. And uh, so since this is a black and white camera, you can do that. And honestly, you have to do it. If you want to have those effects, you can't apply them after the fact very easily because you don't have a color image to deal with like you do if you're shooting color digital. Uh, so you really kind of have to treat it like a black and white film camera in a lot of ways. It's funny, um, when you're shooting with the sonar, it's very tempting to shoot this thing wide open all the time. So uh, this lens is very interesting. It's probably my favorite lens, this and the 25 millimeters ice. Um, the cool thing about the sonar is the out-of-focus areas uh, when you use larger apertures are just incredible. So it really tempts you to shoot everything that way. The other feature of the sonar that is pretty amazing is once you start stopping it down, it's crazy sharp. So it's a really versatile lens. I like it a lot. I don't love the 50 millimeter focal length though. I'm a little weird that way. I, I like either good and wide, like 28 or 25. 
or 90. So after lots of shooting, that's kind of the two focal lengths I like to work at. 50 kind of feels slightly telephoto for a lot of subjects, but not quite telephoto enough, and certainly not wide enough for a lot of subjects. So it's funny, while it's considered the normal lens, it's kind of my least favorite lens to shoot. It feels a little odd, but that's the way it is. If you recall, I did a video a while ago about thinking in color versus black and white. Um, I don't know if you can tell what's behind me or not, but this is one of those moments where I kind of wish I had color. And with the monochrome, even though it's digital, I don't get to pick. With the regular digital camera, I can go, well, I'll just leave that color. I know I'll leave that color. With film, of course, you're more limited, so you have to kind of plan ahead. Um, but you go out knowing that. With digital, it feels a little odd to be limited, but, uh, you know, that's just the nature of the beast. So it's just something that struck me as I walked past this coolie, this really cool golden wall.